Welcome to the Delmarva Almanac and the summer edition of Arts and Times, Delmarva's quarterly arts magazine and community calendar. It was not until he retired that Pete Hassler returned to his first career choice, making art. Now living in Ocean Pines, he sculpts full-time, creating both representational and abstract pieces. I guess it was when I first picked up a crayon. I knew then that I loved to draw. I guess I used to doodle all day in school, grammar school, high school. I should have been doing my work, but I was doodling. <clears throat> then the teacher caught me a couple of times uh, doodling, and they said, can you draw on a blackboard for us Easter eggs and bunnies and this and that? And, and from that day on, I was always the one in class called up to draw on a blackboard. But uh, graduating grammar school, I wanted to go to an art school. Actually, I was accepted in the High School of Visual Arts in Manhattan. But my father wouldn't approve of it. You see, I don't you know, in those days, the parents, they kind of told you what you were going to do. Today, they, you know, you let them do what they want, follow their dream. Not when I was growing up. He said, no way are you going to peddle paintings on a corner for the rest of your life. I said, okay, Dad. He says, you're going to go to uh, <clears throat> the school I went to. I think it was uh, Brooklyn Tech and Engineering School, and he was an engineer. And I said, I'm not taking a subway to go there. Just, I'll go to the local high school. I'm very disappointed I did go to the local high school. The only thing I did in art in local high school was take up major art, and uh, it was my favorite class. Other than that, I used to cut all the other classes, except the gym. After high school, Pete joined the Navy and then the Merchant Marines, so he could see the world, including Italy and Vietnam. I think that's what gave me a lot of inspiration for art, was uh, the buildings in Europe with the sculptures. I was in Pompeii, in Rome, and seeing all Michelangelo's sculptures really inspired me. I said, wow. I said, uh, they called him divine, divine Michelangelo, but he was only human. I said, well, if he can do it, I can do it. Let me give it a shot. <laughs> when Pete returned home, he settled into a job as a New York City fireman until layoffs in 1975 forced him to take some time off. Between doing odd jobs to support his family, he went to college on the GI Bill and took night classes at the Art Student League. They had all volunteered artists, famous artists, teaching there. And I went there a few nights a week. And uh, funny thing, I was in a sketching class and a fellow behind me tapped me on the shoulder and he said, nice, nice work, kid. I said, that voice is for me, and I turned around, it was uh, Peter Pork, the lovable character, Columbo. He studied there, I think Tony <coughs> Bennett studied there. Mm -hmm. A lot of famous uh, people studied there, and they were all good artists. I mean, actors, some of us, they're in the arts, so they were pretty, I know Peter Pork was a very good artist. And uh, we became friends, and uh, we scrapped for coffee this and that. We had an art uh, uh, league in, on a fire department, uh, the fire department uh, fine art league, and we were allowed the lobby of the World Trade Center for an art show, and I had that hanging in the World Trade Center back in 1980. But Pete put away any aspirations for the creative life until his retirement. And so I used to paint. In the beginning, I loved sketching, sketching and painting, but my paintings are like everybody else's to me. I was like a slave for details, sort of like a Kincaid. I used to paint with a magnifying glass and a tiny one hair brush. I wasn't really enjoying it and I didn't get, I did sell some paintings though, but I really didn't get much out of it. I, I guess it was because I couldn't be creative enough with my paintings, they looked like Every, everything else but a stone. You can't duplicate a stone. You can't get the same stone. 
even if it was from the same quarry, the grain would be different. And no matter what you do with the stone, when you finish the stone, the end product, when you polish it, is beautiful. Endless possibilities with stone. Now that I'm retired, I can do my artwork. Matter of fact, everything you see here, I did in the last 10 years since I've been retired. I retired in uh, around the year 2000 from the fire department. And I guess I got out just in time because a year later we had 9-11. And I sat out here on my back porch and I watched that scenario and I watched all my friends. I knew I had a lot of friends there because, you know, I only worked with them a year before. At least 25 close friends were lost. So, I... Uh, Sorry to hear that. Um, so, I was down here retired. The reason I came down here was to, believe it or not, was to play golf down here. This is a golf paradise. And uh, uh, but friends of mine uh, that were coming down to play with me were lost. And uh, so, I didn't play I too much. I just really went out in my garage, that's where I carve. And I started carving stone. I could get so involved with carving stone, I could start at seven in the morning. It would be seven at night, and I'm still carving. Time just melts away. You get an image and you don't want to lose it, so you can't stop. And you're not fatigued, you just keep going. And my wife would be calling me in the garage, aren't you gonna eat? You've been out there 12 hours? I'll be in later, be in later. 12 in the morning, I'm still out there. Pete says that of all the stone he has carved, Carrera marble is his choice because of its great beauty and because it was the favorite of Michelangelo, the artist he looks up to most. Sometimes Pete begins with a plan for a stone and sometimes that stone has a plan for him. There was a stone that looked like a bird and it was granite. I said, well, that's very hard to carve, but look at that, it's not much, there's not much to do. All I gotta do is smooth it out and there's your bird. So I had a diamond blade on a, a grinder and I smoothed it all out and drilled into it and mounted it and it was, uh, had a beautiful finish and I call it the sentinel. There are other stones like uh, that eagle over there that was curved like that and I seen wings and so I went with it. So uh, it's either I have the idea or I don't, and I just work with it, and some pieces I have no idea what I'm doing, I just start carving it, and then it comes to me what to do, or I follow the grain with a piece of wood until it, it dictates what it should be. Sometimes I have an idea of what I want to do. I have a picture in my mind, and I go to work on it. I get a shapeless stone, maybe in a square block. I'll go to Manhattan, I'll buy a, a stone in Manhattan, and then I'll try to keep that idea and try to finish it like that. But sometimes pieces break off that you can't put back. It's not like clay where you can rebuild, take away, rebuild. You take away from stone, that's it, it's permanent. So you have to have a plan B. You have to be flexible. So the idea I had in the beginning had to change and it keeps changing sometimes. Because sometimes you're at a point when you can't go any further. Like writing a book. You get that blockage. It's the same thing with sculpture. And you have to put it down and you have to walk away because if you make a mistake, if you hit it wrong, on a wrong angle and a chunk falls off, there goes that image you had. So sometimes you have to walk away and come back another day and look at it again or dream again about it. Come up with something else. Pete is working on a book about his experiences in the Merchant Marines. His sculptures can be seen at the Worcester County Arts Council, the Ocean City Center for the Arts, and on his website, stonesculpturesbypetehasler.com. Arts and Times is funded by Worcester County Tourism. Explore the beach and beyond at visitworcester.org. Thank you for watching. This has been a Moonshell production.